Do you guys want an overachieving tactic that scores over three goals a game and works brilliantly on the current match engine? If you do, then do stick around. Hello guys, it is Josh from FM Scout, and today we've got a tactic made by Nap. It's going to be a 4-2-3-1, but it's a lot different to your usual 4-2-3-1. This one's going to be a narrow system and one that works really, really well. If you guys do enjoy the tactic videos on this channel, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment below, hype and map up a little bit because we do love these tactics on this channel, and please do subscribe as well. But let's get in to the tact and test and phase and see exactly how good this tactic is. So, we're going to kick things off with a real standout stat, and that is with Aston Villa, because they are actually predicted to finish 13th place, I believe. I will double check. It is 13th place, just to be sure. Didn't want to give you false information. And we have come out and actually won the Premier League. Now, I'm going to be honest, it wasn't a flawless season. We did draw quite a few games, and other teams weren't at their best. But do you know what? It's still a Premier League win. We scored 102 goals. Did concede a fair few at 36, but we were Aston Villa, you know. Their defence isn't exactly Man City's, is it? I mean, overall, though, a very, very good season. Not the best display, obviously, in the cup. So, to be honest... I'm not fast at all. The main aim with Villa was to try and get inside of the top six. That was honestly the goal which I felt like was achievable. So to be winning it is very, very impressive. As you can see, it was a very close sort of league here, though. I mean, we are talking, you know, three points that separates three teams, which, you know, which is very, very close. But to be fair to us, we have got a nice little gap above them and come out and dominated the league, which, in my opinion, is a very, very good sign. In terms of the actual data hub, things are looking quite impressive as well. We are looking at 2.68 goals per game and conceded at 0.95. So quite high on the conceded per game with this team. But I would say it's to be expected. We are Aston Villa at the end of the day. And there are a lot of good attacking teams in the Premier League. What is not expected is to be actually scoring over the two and a half goal mark, which I do love to see because Aston Villa's attack is very good. But to be fair, as I mentioned with the teams that are good at attacking, there's also a lot of good teams that are good at defending in the Premier League. And obviously we're 13th favourites. So I'm really, really impressed with how this has performed, not only in the point standard, but also when it comes down to the stats. In terms of the actual league stats, we're only featuring two of them, and that is going to be most points per game and most goals. By no means, this is really a bit sort of... When you use this with a team like Aston Villa, you're not going to pick up tons and tons of possession. You're not going to pick up tons and tons of pass completion. Like, it's not going to be a high pass completion at all, because it can come, it can come across a bit more of a... Not direct system, but it's definitely not a sort of elegant when you use it with a team like Aston Villa. But what it does do is get really, really good results, as we've seen. And to be honest, I'm not too fussed on the overall league stats. With that finish, that's all I really care about. We then go over to Burnley, obviously, in the Championship. A very favourite favorite team, sorry, in the Championship. And yes, we were definitely favourites for a reason. We managed to get 128 points in the Championship, scoring 170 goals and only conceding 33. So it really was an absolute clinic in this division. We also had a very impressive run in the Carabao Cup, where unfortunately we did... It's disappointing, but it's also understandable. We lost against Liverpool, but even to get to the Carabao Cup final is a really good achievement with Burnley. Not the best display in the FA Cup, but final appearance in the Carabao Cup and winning the league as dominantly as we did, I'm not going to complain at all. And in terms of the actual data hub, we are going to have a quick look. This is looking a lot more pretty now. So 3.7 goals per game, conceded at only 0.72. So you're already seeing how well this tactic can perform and how much better it does when you are a more favourite team. The goals, the goals conceded per game drops by almost 0.2. And the goals per game skyrockets up, practically getting on towards four. So if you are playing as a team that has got some really good attacking players, you can easily get past that three goal a game margin without any issues at all. And in terms of the league stats, we are going to be featured in a fair few more now. We're going to have most points per game, most goals, most shots for over 1,000, by the way. Fewer shots against, fewest conceded, and also the most clean sheets. One thing we're not going to see in this tactic is going to be the possession and the pass completion. Because although it's a 4 3 one it doesn't really play that possession-based sort of football. We are going to see some of the highlights, and you can sort of understand it a little bit better there, but... Still, even without them two factors in the game, we are coming out and absolutely thumping every league we go in. And go over to the Dutch league with Vitesse, a team which we didn't score as many goals with, but the result was still absolutely incredible. Predicted seventh, and we have won the league purely on goal difference, just as I said, we haven't scored many goals. But funnily enough, that is the one factor that made us win the league over Ajax, also runners up in the Dutch Cup against Feyenoord. Um, Ajax must have not had their best season, but to be fair, the only thing that separated, as I just said, was the goal difference. We scored 67 and conceded 17. Now, I will say, we do know of an app tactic. The bookings can be quite extravagant. There are definitely a few bookings to be mentioned. So we are going to be looking at how you can get rid of some of them bookings, as always. Um, I do. I still see comments about, you know, map tactics get a lot of cards and all this and all of that. And they do, but we always go through how you can remove them. So um, obviously, that might affect the overall play style. But if you are sick and tired of getting so many bookings, 
yeah, you can you can definitely tweak the tactic to your advantage. In terms of the date hub, we will have a quick look. So we're looking at 1.97 goals per game, 0.5. So in this one, we're actually seeing a bit better pass completion, the best defensive display we've had, and the worst goals per game. We definitely didn't go out and score as many goals for this team. Um, Again, we were sort of an underdog team, but in my opinion, it's really impressive the concealer per game has also improved when we are an underdog team and the pass completion as well. So overall, although it's not an extravagant season for scoring goals, it got the job done. And in terms of the actual league stats, we are going to be featured in four of them. Most goals at 67, two more than Feyenoord. Most shots, four at 661. And fewest conceded at 17, partners alongside the most clean sheets, pretty much go hand in hand at 20. So a really good defensive display from us this season. Beating the likes of what it's going to be, you know, Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, AZ. I mean, we've really beaten some of the top teams when it comes to the defensive side, which is really good to see. And then we had to do it. We had to test with PSG and we did actually win the Champions League. Now I'm showing you like this because it's not actually on the homepage. We did win the Champions League 3-1 against Manchester City. And if we go to the homepage now, we partnered that alongside of the League One trophy, the French Cup and the Trophy de Champion. And we scored 185 goals and only conceded 11. So this is what you can expect if you are playing as a real, real, real powerhouse team, which I know some of you guys do like to play with, or you might be in a safe sort of 10 years in the future. You've got a team full of wonder kids and you've practically got the same standard of players. So you can put on an absolute clinic in these leagues. 109 points. And in terms of the data hub, it's going to look absolutely incredible. 4.87 goals per game, conceded at only 0.29, and the pass completion around 84%. So even with a team like PSG, the pass completion isn't going to be the main focus. Possession isn't going to be the main focus because that's not how this tactic plays. And to be honest, that's quite refreshing because a lot of tactics that are good the, sort of nowadays are all, you know, sort of tiki-taka and all about possession and, you know, pass completion. So it is quite refreshing to see a tactic that doesn't offer those but still gets incredible results and scores very good amount of goals and defends really well and in terms of the league stats we are going to feature in six of them most points per game most goals at 185 which is absolutely incredible from PSG most shots for fewer shots against fewest conceded and also most clean sheets now I know PSG are an absolute powerhouse when you when you see the tactic and obviously I'm going to say how it lined up you can imagine where these goals come from you have got Neymar you've got Messi you've got Mbappe even Soler is a really good player um so I know it is with a very good team but I like to sh I like to show one of these at least per video because those people that are playing as them can get a real understanding what they can expect we're going to kick things off then with a 7-1 win over for Chelsea and I am going to show you the game well this game mainly because it is obviously against a really really good team as we do the one a lot there from a set piece and they do actually bounce back here I believe with the ball in the box and it's Kambembe who does a little bit of dodgy defending and the keeper just falls to his knees so in my opinion that goal shouldn't have even went in but we're going to take it anyway we'll take it on the chin as Soler builds up again here into Mendes loads of time an absolute wonder ball in and an interesting touch from Mbappe that actually does pay off so fair play to him a very sort of good way to get back into the game. We go again here with Neymar on the ball, just driving at the back line. Literally no one putting the challenge in. There we go. A failed challenge, I would like to add. He plays it into Messi, and I'm not being funny. When you've got Neymar and Messi even on the same field, forget Mbappe for a second. Them two alone can cause destruction. You partner in the likes of Soler and Mbappe and the likes of Hakimi, for example, who played absolutely incredible this season, who cuts it back into Verratti, and you're seeing the amount of players that get into the box. That's one thing I love about Nap, like Nap's tactics in general. He really does not hold back on getting players into the box. He does not hold back on the attacking side of the game, and that's why we're so used to seeing a lot of goals per game with his systems. Hakimi, a long throw in the box this time, into Soler, and that is a goal I actually love to see. It's nice to see a different type of set-piece work. Obviously, something else that Nap does really well in terms of the set-pieces. Soler over the top, into Messi. Great touch, to be fair. Absolutely burnt Ben Chilwell. He's going to cut it back into Mbappe, and Chelsea have got no hope at this point. I mean, this was all in the first half. It was actually 6-1 inside the first half, an absolute destruction, and it's going to be another set-piece, back stick into, I believe that was Kambembe who actually got that goal, and it was an absolute, I mean, it was dominant it really was um Chelsea offered virtually nothing not a good performance from them at all we absolutely dominated I say dominated we did dominate the possession but the xg the shots on target and the shots overall but like you can see um the, the team is honestly incredible some of these players are really really good when you've got like a almost like a front four of Messi, Soler, Neymar and Mbappe you were going to absolutely destroy anyone. But as we saw with Burnley, you can do it with still a good team in a division, but they don't have to be Mbappe's, Neymar's, etc, etc. 
So that leaves us one more thing to do, and that is to break down this tactic. If you are enjoying today's video so far, please do leave a like and subscribe to the FM Scout channel. And also, if you do enjoy myself as a creator, you can check out my links in the description. We post roughly about three tactics weekly on there, and also my Twitch is going to be on the screen right now. But let's go ahead and break down this tactic and talk through some of the team instructions and then the player instructions. So let's kick things off then. It's actually going to be based around a Tiki Taka style, but in my opinion, it's not really playing like one. Um, I feel like that's just a pretty... It's a pretty solid base level to start a tactic off. The mentality is going to be attacking, um, which explains where the goals come from. In possession, you want fairly wide, pass into space, because as I said, it's not a possession-based tactic. So what you are going to be seeing is you can play it about shorter as it is going to be sort of set to shorter. But one thing this tactic is not embarrassed to do is to go long, is to play it into the space. If there's a run in behind, the run will be found. So it's definitely not going to be those who love the possession. We're talking 65 plus, but... Overall, the way that it works is really, really impressive and a higher tempo to partner the short passing. Work ball into the box. Again, if you really do want to go wild, you can take this off and obviously probably easily get 200 goals a season in the league with a team like PSG. Run at defense and also low crosses. Now, the low crosses work really, really well. As you've seen there, a lot of the balls get sort of driven, well, a lot of players go wide, sorry. They cut back pretty much drive it into the box and it's an easy tap in and it works eight times out of ten so i would recommend keeping that on even if you have got sort of tall players in transition you can go with counter press and counter counter is a great way for this system because it defends really really well but when you are trying to go on the counter you want that on because you literally fly at everyone you can see obviously the ones that are mainly going to be getting involved and that front four when they run out of defense there is no stopping them absolutely no stopping them and also the counter press because we're not really trying to you know regroup and sort of you know be too negative we're trying to get aggressive in the game as a lot of naps tactics are they are very intense and very aggressive and also throw it long with distribute to the fullbacks by the way out of possession, you've got the higher defensive line. Now, I personally, I didn't concede a ridiculous amount, but I would be very interested to see how this does perform with it on standard because I feel like you might not score as many goals, but I feel like you might knock out some of them results, which you do concede too many in. So let me know if you do test it with standard. I am very interested to know. And much more often on the trigger press, prevent your goalkeeper distribution, and also one of the map's favourites that get stuck in, which again, if you are sick and tired of too many bookends, you can take it off. But be aware that is going to take away that certain element of the game where you are, you know, getting aggressive, getting stuck in, as it says on the tin, into challenges and trying to win the ball back. Because just because you've got that on, it doesn't mean necessarily that you are going to be going into loads of reckless challenges. It just means there's a chance. And obviously, with one of the seasons, we got a lot of bookends. So I'm just telling you one thing you can do. Going over to the player roles then, I really like how this shapes up, by the way. Um, it looks absolutely incredible. So we're going to kick things off then with a sweeper keeper on defend, on take fewer risks and ease off tackles. Then have a complete wing back on attack, on pass it shorter, take more risks, cross more often, dribble more, shoot less often, close down more and tackle harder. And on the left-hand side, it's exactly the same. So I'm only going to read that out once because I feel like, you know, we don't want to hear that twice. There's no need. They are exactly the same. And then we have a ball playing defender on defend, on pass it shorter, dribble more, shoot less often, stay wider and tackle harder. And to partner him, a ball playing defender on cover, on pass it shorter, dribble more, shoot less often, stay wider and tackle harder. So a lot of instructions on the back line. And as you've noticed, so far, every player is on tackle harder. So feel free to take some of the tackle harders off as well. It might actually be a sensible idea to do this on the defenders so you don't get you know any sending offs, especially in the back line. Now going over to the midfield, we've got a DM on support. Pass it shorter, take fewer risks, dribble less, shoot less often, get further forwards, close down more, mark tighter, and also tackle harder. And to partner him, a deep line playmaker on support, on pass it shorter, dribble more, tackle harder, and mark tighter. Now, again, we are seeing a lot of tackle harders coming in, so feel free to just take off what you want if you want, um, because... He does like having this on, and that is why the tactics are sort of so aggressive. And it does work well, but obviously over a season, you can rack up a fair few bookends. Then we have an AM in the middle, a nice sort of default instruction, to be honest. Nice and simple on support. And then two shadow strikers, either side, both on actually default instructions, which is really impressive to see. It is nice to see as well, because I do feel like sometimes tactics can be overcomplicated, especially with the player roles. Um, I feel like sometimes it almost is seen as a bad thing if you don't go onto a player and, you know, start clicking this, 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 you know. People go crazy with it sometimes, and it's not always needed. And to finish it, an advanced forward on attack, on pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble more, and also tackle harder. And that is going to be this tactic broken down. Like I said, it is a 4 2 3 1, but a very sort of different variant. Obviously, this one is a lot more narrow. Um, and in my opinion, it works really, really well. But if you guys have enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like, subscribe to the FM Scout channel, and I'll catch you on Sunday 
for another tactics video.